Welcome to the podcast for healing neurology, where we talk about everything that can help heal your neurology, which is really everything from food, lifestyle, and medicine to nature, culture, and politics. There's no topic too big or too small. I'm Jillian Ehrlich, family nurse practitioner certified in Ayurveda and functional medicine. And I'm really excited about my guest today because she's got some really fancy toys she likes to play with, and we're going to hear all about them. Priska Wazibo specializes in the treatment of adults 13 and up with major depression. She completed her master's in nursing as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner at the University of Washington. Priska has had a long-standing interest in the field of mental health with over 20 years of medical background. Her passion and expertise include treatment of severe medication-resistant major depressive disorders and obsessive compulsive disorder. She's dedicated to providing the best treatment options to patients and is an expert in the field of brain stimulation technologies, such as transcranial magnetic stimulation. She also applies other cutting edge approaches for best treatment outcomes, including the use of gene site, which is genetic testing, as a way to further personalize patient care. She's the founder and principal partner of Optimum Mental Health Services, which has provided outstanding services for patients in the greater east side of Seattle for over 10 years. For many years, Priska has served as a guest clinical instructor and panelist consultant at the University of Washington. Priska, welcome. We're so happy to have you here on the show today. Thank you for having me, Jillian. I'm very excited to be here today <laughs> to talk about what I love. I also love what you do. So I appreciate that because that is right up my alley. Oh, thanks. Yes. I actually was binge watching some of your interviews. And the one that I particularly found interesting was the one on, on yoga. By, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Kyla, Kyla Pierce. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, Kyla Pierce I, on, yes, yes, and I, for TBI. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love how she's able to connect yoga with uh, fixing brain traumas, yes. injuries. Oh, thank you. That's yes. exciting. My name is Preska Wazibo. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner and certified TMS specialist. I am the CEO and owner of Optima Mental Health Services, which has been serving the greater Seattle area for the last 12 years. Mm-hmm. And I'm also the director of Eastside TMS and Wellness Center. We help people dealing with depression at their most vulnerable state when medications has not been effective, get their lives back. That's so great. We are really excited to hear all about TMS today and to hear about kind of you and your transition and the work that you're doing. Yeah, so I actually have a backstory to, you might yeah. want to know how I got started in um, I would in, love in to know. Health. So my story started way back when I didn't even know what psychiatry was, what mm-hmm. mental health was. Being from Nigeria, mm-hmm. where the stigma around mental health is mm-hmm. a big problem. Mm-hmm. Of course, that meant there are lack of education, poor treatment facilities, extremely lack of awareness. My mother took me to a market and I saw a scene that an imprint in me. Mm -hmm. And this was a group of people that were maybe linked together by rope or so. And they were being uh, uh, mistreated by Mm. what seems like two guards or maybe they might have been like the caregivers. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking my mother what was going on, who those were. Mm -hmm. And she just quietly said, those are the crazy people. You know, I must have been six or seven at Mm -hmm. that time, Mm -hmm. but I actually remember vividly thinking that the only crazy people that I saw were those two people that were mistreating those poor people. Mm. What I didn't know then Mm -hmm. was that that scene was going to would play in my head Mm -hmm. over and over again for years, and it would eventually lead me to exactly where I was meant to be. It's an incredible story. So you were really impressed upon at that young age that there was something, there was, an, there was a wrong in the world that needed to be corrected around mental health, not only mental health and taking care of people who were sick, but also in terms of how we do that in, in terms of the ways that we treat the sick. Absolutely. Yes. Did that start your interest in medicine? I did start going to medicine, but funny enough, I didn't go directly into psychiatry. I received my bachelor's degree and master's at University of Washington. Mm -hmm. And I also worked there for about 10 years Mm -hmm. in the area of uh, acute care setting, treating transplant patients. It was towards the last couple of the years that I started transitioning to the mental health field. Mm. But what I, what's actually important about this is um, uh, mental health is not in isolation. Everywhere you are, every patient you meet, that should also be factored in and considered mm-hmm. because part of 
what they struggle with also impacts their mental health. Yeah, absolutely. See, we are on the same page, you know. (laughs) <laughs> you knew it. I knew it. So even in, and you were working in transplant, correct? Yes. Yes. And so very far from the brain, but absolutely. We know that transplant patients and acutely ill, anybody who's going through a surgery, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with their mind and with their mental health. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why I, I actually saw myself shine because uh, even though we are dealing with patients who are on the brink of death, Mm -hmm. Um, especially for liver transplant, for example, you know, in order to qualify to be a recipient, you you almost have to be near death. Um, So there's a lot of fear, but being able to know how to comfort them or how to help them or guide them through the process, you know, so that they can feel like they're not alone, Mm -hmm. that feel like they're strong enough to be able to continue forward because it is quite a heavy upload. I mean, uphill battle that they, the challenges that they're facing. And so when you started your psychiatric nurse practitioner, tell us about kind of how your thinking was about treatment and about patients. Yeah. So starting, uh, I've always been interested in how to optimize patient outcome. Mm-hmm. You know, you might relate to this, but um, as a, a healthcare provider, or at least personally, yeah, there's a sense of responsibility we feel mm-hmm. that it's our job to make our patients that can't come to our, that presents to us, um, make their life better, make them improve for mm-hmm. what they're coming in for. Mm-hmm. And of course, sometimes it's uh, beyond your control, meaning that, you know, you're trying different medications to treat their Uh, illnesses, and uh, not everyone are lucky enough to respond to them. So this obviously takes me into the search for how else can I improve their quality of life, Mm -hmm. their outcome, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from that search, I came up on a treatment called TMS, Mm -hmm. which stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. Mm -hmm. With that, learning more about it and seeing the significant changes, uh, outcomes patients were receiving and seeing that it was actually FDA approved in 2008. Mm. And before that, it was being used, right, for to treat depression successfully, but actually uh, uh, FDA approved in 2008. It was like finding gold mine mm. for me mm-hmm. because uh, here's the answer to what I've been searching for, which is, you know, wanting my patients to recover from their illnesses, mm-hmm. depression. Um, so that I had Basically, I had no uh, no doubt that this mm. is something that I was going to pursue and uh, learn more about and uh, eventually start treating my patients with it. Mm, amazing. So tell us what it is and what it's like. Tell us a little bit more about TMS. So TMS has been used to treat depression, like I said, for a, long, for a while before the FDA approval. So since 1985. And then was uh, FDA approved in 2008. It's a non-invasive alternative to other options, including medication, psychotherapy, or ECT. Mm -hmm. Right. And ECT Um, being ECT being electroconvulsive therapy, Mm -hmm. which is not TMS. Mm -hmm. To be clear, Mm -hmm. okay. So transcranial magnetic stimulation is a non-invasive, non-medication, very effective treatment for depression that uses brain stimulation to release neurotransmitters into the areas of the brain associated with the mood disorder. And we looked a little bit at your equipment today, right? So it's a chair that you sit in. And can you walk us through the process of kind of when the patient comes in and they sit down in the chair, you kind of line up, tell us a little bit about what it's like. Okay, so what it's like is it's actually, like I said, it's a non-invasive treatment. I start off by doing a consultation with a patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that consultation, I spend about an hour with the patient to do the evaluation, gauging to see if um, they meet the requirement for treatment and explaining to them what TMS is and what to expect. Sometimes we have patients who are very knowledgeable. So first I gauge where their knowledge level is. Mm -hmm. The whole goal of that consultation is uh, uh, to equip them with that knowledge of what TMS is and what to expect, right? Mm -hmm. And then also some 
science behind the TMS. Mm -hmm. um, so typically there are patients who have uh, tried multiple medications and failed to achieve improvement. Mm -hmm. um, so, but typically a patient would come in on, on a day of their treatment and we do what we call mapping. Mapping is a way of locating the right treatment spot for the conduction of the magnetic conduction, uh, non-invasively. Uh, the treatment location is on the left prefront, basal lateral prefrontal cortex. And then once we target their location, we use that marking as a treatment process. And the treatment lasts about 18 minutes. And uh, generally, patients are able to talk mm -hmm. during treatment. They can listen to music. Uh, they can chat with us. And there's no loss of consciousness. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have patients who come right after work mm -hmm. um, on their way home or even before work. Uh, for those that live near our clinic, they actually come during their lunch time um, mm. since there's only the treatment duration is actually about 18 and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And so does it hurt? The first, and, and which is, this is kind of part of uh, what I also tell uh, patients uh, during our consultation is, you know, sort of like what to expect, right? There's a, I think uh, what you might compare it to like a woodpecker tapping, like a tap, 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 tap sensation. Oh. For anyone that has ever had an MRI, mm -hmm. um, it's actually exactly like that. Oh. Except that the coil that is now placed in your head, again, mm -hmm. non-invasively, is uh, producing that energy. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, the first couple of days, patients might feel a little discomfort mm -hmm. at the site. Once the treatment is done, the pain goes away. So I might advise patients who have lower pain threshold, for mm -hmm. example, to pre-medicate with, with over-the-counter analgesics like Tylenol or ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that was that, that used to be my standard uh, direction mm -hmm. until um, I asked a patient, did you take your Tylenol? And I was like, no, I don't need it. And then it turns out that some people, it's not a big deal. Uh -huh. so, so to answer your question, um, it's, it's a tiny discomfort. I think it is a little getting used to. Yeah. But once they get used to that, it's actually pretty okay. And that's why they're able to have conversations and, yeah. you know, talk about their dogs, or about <laughs> their, you know. Go back to work family. after lunch. Go back to work after lunch. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so when do patients start to feel changes? That's a good question. Very good question. And, uh, and patients also are interested yeah. in that question. Right? <laughs> how like, soon does it get better? How soon does it get better? Yes. So it's with noticing so it's about two weeks mark. Okay. Gotcha. When patients start to feel improvements, mm -hmm. but funny enough, actually, um, the first people to notice this, it's actually people around them. Oh, I had one patient tell me that their coworker said, there's something different about you. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of pleasant. Oh, huh. you know, uh -huh. um, or family members, you know, mm -hmm. telling them like, you know, you seem to be, you know, lighter or mm -hmm. there's just something good happening. Uh, so about two weeks mark is when they start seeing a shift. And uh, we measure their progress with a, a scale, a PHQ-9 scale. Mm -hmm. So every week we measure them to see where they're at. Typically, our patients will start off with a uh, severe depression. So mm -hmm. anywhere from 20 to 27, mm -hmm. uh, 27 being the maximum. And uh, it's always a, a sweet deal to see that numbers go down. Yeah. Uh, so when we graph it, you can see the numbers go all the way even down to one. Wow. And sometimes uh, you have patients say, well, the only reason why it's a one, we still have that one because <laughs> of this. Like they're like, now it's like, oh, darn, I almost had a zero. Yeah. Uh, but mind you, zero to four. Yeah. And that's on PHQ-9 is considered no depression. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Yes. Maybe they're a little sad about a global pandemic that might still be happening. <laughs> I think we are all sad about the global pandemic yeah. that is still happening. <laughs> and in fact, of course, you know, with that, unfortunately, that has worsened the depressive episodes of uh, pandemic. It has actually, um, I think uh, before pandemic, we used to say one in 10 people were depressed. Mm -hmm. But uh, sadly, 
it's actually there are now one in three. Wow. So if you can imagine wow. that. So every three people you see, one of them is uh, struggling with some depressive issues. Wow. Yeah. What a burden. It's what a, a burden. It's, it's awful. But you're getting results here when medications can't. We're getting results here when medication can't. It's uh, it's superior to medications. So I've been uh, treating patients with medications, you know, for the Mm -hmm. last 12 years. And uh, even when medication works and patients are doing better, I have never heard anyone use the word miracle Mm. to describe how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, that word is quite often fascinating. Often said after patients go through their treatment, the TMS treatment. That's amazing. And the TMS treatment, how, how is it structured? So how many treatments do you do and, and what's the yes. routine for them? Yes. So the TMS is approved for 36 sessions. Oh. It's five days a week, mm-hmm. uh, lasting 18 and a half minutes Mm -hmm. okay and that goes on for about five to six weeks Uh, patients can sometimes you know you know life happens sometimes uh, there's some patients that right off the bat will say can only do four Mm -hmm. and that's okay Um, it just means it's going to take longer for them to complete their whole series and um, while it may seem like a lot of commitment which it is Mm -hmm. but you have to remember these are the patients who you know, for as long as they can remember, have been struggling with depression. Mm. And anyone who struggles with depression could tell you that it's awful to, you know, Mm -hmm. with the process Mm of being on different medications or trying different medications that are not working or partially effective. And that process could take months and months and months because, you know, you start a medication, Mm -hmm. you start low dose, and then you check back in a few weeks. And if there's like maybe a tiny, Mm -hmm. a tiny glimmer of hope, you optimize the medication, Mm -hmm. you give them another month or so, you go on, and then you're trying to deal with the side effects. You know, they have, they're dealing with sexual side effects, they're dealing with the GI side effects, Mm -hmm. they're dealing with um, a headache, they're dealing with, with, uh, fatigue, Mm -hmm. um, you know, all sorts of side effects. And in fact, I have patients who would not change meds. The only reason why they refuse to change medications because they are so afraid of Mm. the withdrawal symptoms that they might experience from the medication, even though the medication that they're on is not working for them. Mm. Or even they're afraid of what the next medication will do to them because Mm -hmm. they've had such bad experiences Mm -hmm. with uh, being on medication. Mm. And so do you need to be off medications to do TMS? Absolutely not. You do not. You do not need to be uh, off your medication, which actually tried to keep things um, stable. Mm -hmm. So whatever medications that they're on Mm -hmm. will keep them on that and start the treatment. Obviously, if there's a reason to optimize something, we will override that and Mm -hmm. do that. You know, but so when the FDA, when the study was submitted to FDA, those patients were actually stripped of their medication. Oh. So they were actually destabilized. And the reason being that when you're trying to submit a study, mm-hmm. right, um, you want to, you don't want to have anything that could uh, confuse your data, mm-hmm. your results, mm-hmm. right? So I understand that. Uh, but then even then still, they were able to achieve a pretty uh, impressive result, mm-hmm. which, you know, gave that green light to approve uh, TMS in 2008. But mm. we do not have to do that. We don't have that to uh, anything to prove except to uh, help our patients. Mm-hmm. Um, so the compare that data to our data, we are pretty higher up mm-hmm. uh, for two reasons. We're not dismantling patient stability, right? Mm-hmm. And for a second, since TMS has become, has now proven itself over and over year after year, insurance companies are beginning to less reduce the restrictions that they have, the criteria mm. to meet the requirements. So patients don't do not have to be completely mobile and oh, yeah, great. before they they can be, um, they can qualify to use TMS treatment. Oh, that's great. So it often is covered by insurance then. 
Yes. Yeah. Most insurances cover TMS, including Medicare, Medicaid, wow. and TRICARE. Yes, they do. Some insurances obviously have a little more difficulty uh, uh, approving treatment. You know, their criteria might be a little more strict, stricter mm-hmm. than some others. But it appears every year you mm-hmm. see there's a, a less, less restrictions mm-hmm. to that cri- uh, qualifying criteria. So which is a really good news for our patients. Oh, that's fantastic. And so can you talk a little bit about how you target different conditions when you're using TMS? So like depression versus anxiety versus OCD mm-hmm. yes. or obsessive compulsive disorder? Mm-hmm. Yes. So the, the area uh, that uh, depression responds to is the basal lateral prefrontal cortex on the left side, right? That specific target area that we're targeting to treat the depression. Mm -hmm. So if you think of the depression, anyone who's depressed, you know, there's something that is missing. There's lack of connection. There's a, the neurons are not connecting. The chemical messengers are, are not talking to each other. And in fact, uh, side effects of depression is apathy, low energy, mm-hmm. um, even words don't come out so clearly, or or even um, I always say that I can actually hear people's depression when they're speaking to me oh. because I've done this for so many years. Oh. That there's actually like a lag in the way they speak, um, and there's a lot of insecurity in their words. Uh-huh. Um, yes, yeah, so the left side prefrontal cortex is an uh, area that's needing to be stimulated, right? Yeah. So you're stimulating those neurons to regenerate the neurotransmitters mm-hmm. that are uh, responsible for our mood regulation, mm-hmm. like uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamines. Now, on the left, on the right side, now somebody who has anxiety, it means that there's overactive stimulation going on. Mm-hmm. There's something that's, you know, the cortisol level is high. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to treat anxiety, mm-hmm. now we're treating on the other side. So what you're actually doing is that uh, you're trying to uh, suppress you know, it's like a GABA, you're trying to bring it down to calm it down, right? Okay. So that they're not in an anxious state. So that's kind of like the different approach to... Um, Still frontal frontal cortex? Yes, frontal cortex, yes. Frontal cortex on a different side. Ah, and what about for obsessive compulsive disorder? In the same, capa- same capacity too, mm-hmm. yeah, because of, say, uh, obsessive compulsive disor- disorder, although it has its own standalone on you know, DSM-5, mm-hmm. but if you think about it, it's still... In the family of anxiety, because mm-hmm. anxiety, so like you know, it's like a the next level step high up of uh, yeah. anxiety. Now, just specific to behavior or obsession of you know thoughts or mm-hmm. uh, compulsive behavior. Okay, great. And have you seen it be helpful for OCD? I have seen it be helpful for OCD and amongst other things. Mm-hmm. And again, like I, like I said. It takes sometimes some time for FDA to finally give you like a, a green light. But in the world of psychiatry, we do use off-label medication. For example, I use propanolol, which is a beta mm-hmm. blocker mm-hmm. for a hypertension to treat uh, social anxiety, mm-hmm. right? You know? mm-hmm. um, yeah, so, but it's, it's coming, mm-hmm. it's coming, mm-hmm. yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah, there's a, a slew of other ailments that TMS is being used for. I have a feeling we're just scratching the surface here. Can you talk about what some of those other things are or some of the other suspicions yes. you have it might be effective yes. for? Bell's palsy. Oh, is really? Been, yes, yes. It's been used to treat uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh-huh. like f- with from fibromyalgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's used to treat migraines. Mm. It's also used to treat correct uh, sleep disorder because mm-hmm. we know that sleep, uh, our circadian rhythm is uh, regulated by mm-hmm. actual our serotonin regulation, mm-hmm. you know, where melatonin is produced in the pineal gland mm-hmm. uh, with the dysfunctional serotonin level. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, goes your sleep cycle mm-hmm. as well too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, so there's so many, so many different things that TMS is um, used for. You know, bipolar disorder. Mm-hmm. Although data have not supported that there's uh, any significant improvement with bipolar disorder, especially with the manic episode. Mm-hmm. However, Mm -hmm. uh, patients with bipolar 2, which Mm -hmm. is uh, the hypomanic uh, episode, but they live in depressive state. We've also have successfully treated a bipolar disorder, bipolar 2, who is uh, pretty much depressed most of their life. They may be a mood stabilizer that's controlling the uh, cycling of their mood, but uh, with the TMS, it's helped them like to 
bring up their that depressive episode mm-hmm. that that's chronic and uh, long lasting, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, fascinating. So yes, scratching the surface is a good way to think about it. There's a lot that this can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And can you talk, not to get too nitty gritty, (laughs) you know, when you're having that stimulation, like what is the energy that's going into your head? What is the lightning bolt that's being transmitted? Do you know what I mean? Like, can you describe how the energy gets into your head or what is happening? Again, like I said, when I compared it to the MRI, you know, if we think of MRI as mm-hmm. a, you know, if anyone has ever had the MRI before. So we're, you know, science and technology gave us ability to create mm-hmm. enough energy through magnetic, right? Mm-hmm. And so therefore not having to go through invasive route, you know, to penetrate through a patient through our skull, mm-hmm. right? Enough strength to be able to stimulate the neurons, right? Mm-hmm. That are responsible to making those neurotransmitters, mm. right? Mm-hmm. To regenerate those neurotransmitters. Um, so that is, I mean, I don't know if I'm asking, answering your question correctly, but you know, the fact that the energy that is safe mm-hmm. and effective is able to deliver targeted, right? To that, those specific areas of deficit to be able to create that, those uh, neurotransmitters and in turn help regulate mood. And um I might, you know, this may be still not off of what you asked, but if if we kind of compare to medication, uh-huh. I think uh, people might want to know um, how is uh, how, why is it superior over uh, medication? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Apart from the fact that medication is an invasive procedure because it goes anything that gets into your bloodstream. Yeah. You know, not travels all over your body, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and the fact that also you don't know the quantity amount that you actually get into the area that it, it needs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But if you think about the class of medications that we use, you know, the most popular class of antidepressant is a um, SSRI, mm-hmm. serotonin reuptake inhibitor, mm-hmm. right? So what it's actually doing is trying to optimize the serotonin, the neurotransmitters, mm-hmm. right? It's trying to optimize it to be receptive at the right side mm-hmm. to activate, you know, but think about people who have poor production of it, right? right? So, so the medication is not actually producing that, right? And medication is a chemical stimulant. So, if something like I said, uh, uh, magnetic stimul- stimulation mm-hmm. sounds like oh, shock, but chemical is a chemical stimulant because this is a chemical meds that are made in the lab, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I think actually should be more scary, <laughs> right? Than something that is not invasively that does that avoids all areas that it doesn't need to you yeah. know, uh, interfere with. Okay, but the TMS itself is regenerating the ability to make those neurotransmitters, ah. and that is why you will have a patient who has failed four or five medications or now being uh, treated with adjunct medications. And sometimes some of them are are on lithium in addition to the antidepressants uh, or uh, some antipsychotics like Abilify or Rixolti um, to to adjunct to their antidepressant. And that's why you can have those patients treat their uh, depression with TMS and suddenly feel better. Mm -hmm. And, And then you hear them say things like, I wish I had done this sooner. Oh, yeah. If I had a nipple, every time I hear that, I wish I had done this sooner. Yeah. I had a patient who, as um, soon as they were done, they their son was calling for treatment. Their oh, sister right. was calling. Of course. You, know, you know, depression is also a genetic predisposition, uh, predisposition right? Okay. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, the therapy is a, a very effective mm-hmm. and efficient, yeah. Amazing. And so, how long does it last then? That is a good question. Good question. I said that because uh, that is a, <laughs> a very, very uh, common question I, res- I, I get from patients, mm-hmm. and righteously so. Patients would say, you know, I feel good and all, but here's the sad thing. It's like once they have felt the improvement, it's actually pretty sad because they realized they've been living oh. down in the hole. Yeah, yeah. And- yeah. They never want to go back there again. Yeah. So it's really, really important for them. Yeah. You know, to know how long is this going to last? What can I do to keep this 
own because the things that we take for granted. Yes, absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. they're actually experiencing it now mm-hmm. for the first time, mm-hmm. maybe, right? Um, so, but how long it lasts, um, it all varies. Mm-hmm. I I said, because we have been doing this for quite a long time now, so we have a lot of data. So I'm going to be speaking from our own data. Mm -hmm. Um, A majority of patients actually treat their depression, and and that's it. Wow. Yes. I have patients who choose to stay on meds. Mm -hmm. You know, one lady said to me, if it ain't broken, let's not try to fix it. (laughs) They don't want yeah. to jinx it. Mm-hmm. And I agree. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. I have some patients that are highly motivated to get off their medication. Mm-hmm. I had a gentleman that said to me, you know, I've been on these meds since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. I want to know what it's like to not have to be, you know, tied to this medication. Mm-hmm. And of course, I have to be, you know, I have to, to like beg him to let's go slow. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Let's, mm-hmm. let's go slow. Let's not trigger any unnecessary mm-hmm. unnecessaries, mm-hmm. right? And that particular patient, so he agrees with me. So we slowly tapered off of his medications, mm. right? Wow. You know, and then I have some patients that I may just, you know, maybe we just start trimming them down. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not unusual to have patients be on four different meds at the same time. Mm-hmm. Some of them are, they're treating the side effects of some other medications, oui. mm-hmm. right? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. So how long it lasts, you know, apart from those that last, you know, uh, for foreseeable future, mm-hmm. right? There are also some patients that we may hear back from them a year after treatment. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the interesting thing though. They would say it's not as bad bad as it used to be Mm -hmm. i just don't want to get there so they've Mm. seen some decline happening Mm -hmm. so they want to nip it in the butt Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. you know so so for those patients we do what we call booster treatment Mm -hmm. right where we uh ask insurance to allow us for maybe say 20 sessions Mm -hmm. and instead of doing it every day Mm -hmm. we might do it like you know three times a week you know? Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. So, and I've, we've had patients that uh, two years later, they came back and, and wanted to do it again, mm-hmm. you know, and um, we have a few patients now. Uh, this is kind of like a new concept that we are, we are uh, looking into. And that is, uh, even though that their depression is pretty much non-existent, uh, but they do, we call it prophylactic treatment, mm-hmm. like whereby they want to do like once a week, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just to keep make sure that it stays gone, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, so it all varies. But I, but I do reassure our patients that even after your treatment, mm-hmm. you can continue to actually increase in how you feel. And sometimes um, what that really is, is um, patients who were not, say, for example, exercising, socializing, because social isolation is one of the issues related to um, uh, depression. You know, they're now connecting with people they're not doing those things that we do that, you know, that means wellness, right? Mm-hmm. They are taking care of themselves, mm-hmm. you know. They're interested in working out, losing weight. Uh, they're interested in dating. They're interested in all sorts of activities that, you know, that actually maintains that wellness. And and uh, but and what I actually do, because I do love the idea of also playing a role in our wellness and well-being um so along the way of their treatment i'm also educating them on ma- on what it means to maintain their wellness you know maybe slowly engaging them into like you know taking daily walks mm-hmm. right breathing exercise right even uh recommending some books that mm-hmm. uh you know that allows them to gain more insight and their mood and their reaction and emotional regulations so there's a, yeah, there's a lot that we uh, do besides the TMS, but that complements the TMS mm. very, very well. Because our goal is for ongoing wellness, right? Everyone deserves to be well, to be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I say life is hard enough already. Yes. You know, I equate uh, depression as, you know, running a, a race, but having a weight uh, strapped to your ankle versus other people who didn't get equal treatment yeah. and then you expect it to still perform at the same capacity yeah. as they are. So it's not, it's a, it's a much harder struggle for them, yeah. you know, versus the, uh, those that don't uh, struggle with depression. In that way.
And so what I'm hearing you saying is kind of what we have talked a lot about in other podcasts and what we believe at the Center for Healing Neurology, which is that, you know, there may well be something organic in the brain, but that just fixing something organic in the brain is not necessarily going to make you a good, perfect, happy life. It's it's the combination of the external life and the internal life so that they have to go together. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely, Jillian. Another, um, I like to use a lot of analogies or examples uh-huh. and <laughs> with my patients. And I would say, I would say, you know, you know how, how when you go to a conference on uh, motivational conference, mm-hmm. right? You know, you come back and you're all, you know, jazzed up and you're ready to take the world on by the storm and, and, and it's amazing. You're changing things and, and, and whatnot. Um, about, you know, and so that could go on for a while, mm-hmm. and then, but midway, halfway, maybe about a few months later, you start to sort of decline in that, you know, energy. And uh, maybe a year later, it's like that never happened, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, the reason why that did not continue on is because there was no maintenance, Mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's supposed to be your starting, you know, like you had your loading dose, your starting. Yes. uh, Yes. (laughs) And now it's time to, it's now you need to, Continue those practice, right? Yeah. Continue the mindfulness practice. Continue the the your exercise practice. With those things that you started doing that were making you feel good, right? So I always tell patients that uh, even those I just give medications to, I like to always tell them that that is not the, the only answer. You know, I tell them it's like it starts to think of like a piece of pie, mm-hmm. right? You know, so medication is this part and this part is you Mm -hmm. and this part is you doing this and this part is that and this part is the support you have and this part is you know engaging in therapy you know the things that all those things that we need to do to keep ourselves you know well Mm -hmm. than everyone needs to do right Mm -hmm. you know so it's a kind of framing it in that way um and i think not only is that helpful but i think it's that it it empowers them i think uh, when you know that you know you hold the power Mm -hmm. you know to your well-being right Mm -hmm. and you have a support team but you you actually play an integral part to it um i think that even further assures their success that's fantastic wow we really covered it (laughs) (laughs) are there any contraindications for tms yes there are contraindications for the tms and so during my um consultation i'm also looking for that mm-hmm. so someone who has um seizure um uh, or someone who has um brain aneurysm mm-hmm. or metal clip you know mm-hmm. bullet fragments mm-hmm. right those would be contraindicated to tms mm-hmm. um again that's because of the abundance of caution mm-hmm. to not further in, put them at risk uh, so those would be the people that we would probably not want to treat mm-hmm. at that at this time and then you can if TMS is not an option, then you can kind of go back to your other therapies that you use, that beautiful description you laid out Absol- about that whole life. Absolutely. 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 And that and that's what we'll continue to encourage them to uh, to do. We also consult with other disciplines, providers, you know, we, I've consulted with the neurologist mm-hmm. you know, about certain things that I'm not sure about. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, somebody who had a pacemaker mm-hmm. wanted to make sure that even though it's further from their brain, mm-hmm. but again, wanted to make sure that that's not going to interfere mm-hmm. with their pacemaker or AICD. We've had uh, patients with um, fillings, um, so making sure it's not neuromagnetic you know, type, right? Uh, so I have to consult with the dentist to make sure that the fillings is, uh, you know, not the older version mm-hmm. of it that could interfere. If TMS is not an option, then if you wouldn't mind just saying a few words about your gene site, how you use, what that is and how yeah. you use it in your practice. Yeah, gene site, gene site, which I, I think it should just be a standard of care. If you ask me, Mm -hmm. I started using Genesite in 2014. It's a ability to check patient's tolerance. Yeah, Genesite is uh, to see how a patient will respond to different medications. It's uh, similar to asking a patient, 
for example, what does your, does your mom have, say, depressed, suffer with depression? Mm -hmm. If they do, what medication are they on? So if they say they're on Prozac, right, for example, uh, because uh, the patient is related to their mother, even though we know they're not their mother, Mm -hmm. right? But we might be more inclined to choose Prozac if Prozac was successful to, uh, for their mom, right? Mm-hmm. So gene site is actually checking against your own genotype, mm-hmm. right? To see if they're compatible. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so then it lays out the medications that will be compatible for you. Mm-hmm. So then that way, it reduces the unnecessary suffering and time wasting of choosing medications that are not indicated for that particular person's mm-hmm. genotype. Mm-hmm. And so GeneSight is a salivary test? It's a it's, cheek swab? It's a, yes, we do it in the office here. It's a sal- saliva-based. Uh-huh. Uh, so we collect the, the saliva, swab the saliva, and uh, FedEx the package to the lab where they get processed and, uh, and we get the result back mm-hmm. and, and then share that information with, with patients. It's always nice to see when patients say, that explains why I'm always sick when I took this oh, medication. Oh, yeah. You know? So, you know, um, but, but more just, just like, it just helps, you know, fasten our way to it. You know, mental health, unfortunately, is not a, a, an area where we can draw blood and, mm-hmm. and to get a, um, a, an objective data, you mm-hmm. know, or do a check x ray and see, aha, you have less low and low pneumonia, and that's a treatment pathway to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is all. You know, listen to the patient, gauge them what their, um, you know, what their symptoms are uh, sounding like, and deciding based on the collective information, you know, the tre- the best treatment option for them. Oh, that's great. You must be so good at this because you've been such a good conversationalist and listener today with all my questions. Um, and I loved how you were talking about how you can hear depression in the the cadence of a person's voice. Like you must know so much now when you just watch a person, you know, what's going on in their mind that's kind of triggering their thoughts and how, their presentation. Absolutely. So this has been good for you. You have a good time. I do. I do. Yes. <laughs> you like it. Yes. I love my job. That's my great. passion. That's great. I mean, your place is amazing and you're treating a lot of people and you're using this really cutting edge technology and it's really just a treat to see and a treat to be here with you today. Thank you. Thanks for having us over. Thank you, Joanne. Do you have any last things you want to say about your practice here? Yes, absolutely. So you can uh, reach us, the website, bcitmswellness.com. Well, thank you so much for this. I really uh, enjoyed uh, you speaking with, with me and seeing our clinic today. I want to, uh, for anyone, tell if anyone dealing with depression, our team at Eastside TMS Wellness Center are here to help you get your life back. Yes. So you can call us today. Our number is 425-919-6826. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, at Eastside TMS. Our clinic is very flexible. We're open from six and Monday. We're open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh, that's so, fantastic. So that Those makes, are good hours. Yeah, that makes it makes it really easy for our patients to be able to accommodate their uh, working schedule. Oh, that's fantastic. And when patients see you for the consultation, you help navigate the insurance piece to get the approval. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah, we, Kudos. <laughs> we, it is actually, we take that uh, burden off of the patients. That's great. When people are depressed, even getting up the burden your teeth is out it's very nice. yes yeah. yeah you can yeah. just imagine trying right. to manage and insurance exactly. conversations so so because this is what we do and we do it over and over so we have already figured out ways to uh efficiently get their approvals oh great uh, done. great well thank you so much for having us thank you and thank you all for listening today with Crisco wazibo We've got lots of ways to continue this conversation through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also get more information from and about Prisca at their website, eastsidetmswellness.com, or at our website, centerforhealingneurology.com. Please be sure to share this show with your friends. We welcome your rating and review wherever you get your podcasts, and feel free to send topic requests to podcast at centerforhealingneurology.com. We love that you've joined us today to discuss how to make our whole world medicine We rise or fall together, and we're committed to doing what we can to make as many of us as healthy as possible. And this takes all of us, including you. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Artificial.
Fish Media. Party Fish Media acknowledges that it operates and records on indigenous Duwamish and Puget Sound Coast Salish land that is still home to the Duwamish tribe. This land is stolen in violation of the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. We are committed to uplifting the name of these lands and community members from these nations who reside alongside us. For more information on this land, its people, or ways you can help, visit duwamishtribe.org.